Good morning. Welcome to online worship with the First Unitarian Church of Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm Sarah Stewart. I'm the minister here. I'm leading worship this morning with our director of music, Will Sherwood, our director of faith development, Juliet Donaldson, our assistant director of music, James Haup, and our children's coordinator, Abigail Hannaford Riccardi. Our guest musician is Jonathan Clark on trumpet, and Andy Donaldson is volunteering as our camera operator. It is wonderful to have all of you who are watching with us this morning. Here at First Unitarian Church, we strive in loving fellowship to honor the sacred, connect with each other, and serve justice. We are a welcoming congregation. Whatever your age, race, class, nationality, sexual orientation, or gender identity, we are delighted to have you with us this morning. We are thinking of all of you with love and affection during this difficult time when we cannot be together in person. You can stay connected to the church through our website, firstunitarian.com, our Facebook page, and our newsletter. If you would like to receive our newsletter, please go to firstunitarian.com and click subscribe to our newsletter at the bottom of any page. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In the spirit of love, we light this chalice. We join together in renewing the covenant of our church with the words we say every Sunday. In the love of truth and in the spirit of Jesus, we unite for the worship of God and the service of all. The Story of the Poppy, based on the book The Poppy Lady, Moina Bell Michael and Her Tribute to Veterans, by Barbara Elizabeth Walsh. Moina Bell Michael was a girl who dreamed of helping others, and she believed anything was possible if you did your best and followed through. She was in Europe in 1914, and it was beautiful. But then the Great War started, and Moina saw the destruction of battle. Bomb craters, trenches, barbed wire barriers, and battlefields covered the countryside. Back home in Georgia, she worried. Would America enter the war? Moina prayed not. But when war came, Moina volunteered. She vowed to do everything she could for the soldiers leaving for Europe. 
She knitted socks and sweaters, rolled bandages for the Red Cross, and gave gifts to departing soldiers. But Moina wanted to do more. She delivered books, magazines, and candy to the soldiers' campus nearby. And she invited soldiers over for dinner. And then, when it was time for them to leave, Moina went to the train station to see them off, filled with pride for their bravery. But Moina needed to do even more. She became a worker for the YMCA, supporting soldiers home on leave. One day, she found a magazine and read a poem by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, a Canadian physician. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing to fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders field. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders' field. Moina knew she could do more. And on the back of an envelope, she wrote her own poem. O oh, you who sleep in Falanda's fields, sleep sweet to rise anew. We caught the torch you threw, and holding high, we keep the faith with all who died. We cherish too the poppy red that grows on fields where valor led. It seems to signal to the skies that blood of heroes never dies but lends a luster to the red of the flower that blooms above the dead in Flanders' field. She ended her poem with this pledge. And now the torch and poppy red we wear in honour of our dead. Fear not that ye have died for naught. We'll teach the lesson that ye wrought in Flanders' field. Moina knew just what to do. She would always wear a red poppy in honour of the men who had died. And she would not stop until everybody wore poppies to remember. And through the sale of these poppies, raise money to support veterans all over America. Today, poppies are the symbol of Memorial Day. And all over the world, people wear poppies on November the 11th, the day the Great War ended, to remember all those who died. With inspiration and dedication, Moina had found a way to honor and remember all soldiers, always. Blessed be.
please join me in the spirit of prayer. We hold in our hearts all those who gave their lives in service to their ideals, those who fought for our country, in the military, those in our communities who have given their lives in service as first responders, those in this current outbreak who are serving as medical professionals and have faced sickness and death. We remember, too, all of our beloved dead. We remember all the ways they serve the greater good. We hold them in our hearts. Their memories are with us still. On this Memorial Day Sunday, we recommit ourselves to our highest ideals, to our greatest calling. We orient our lives to that goodness and that spirit. We ask that it animate all that we do and all who we are. Amen. In this time of prayer, we share the joys and sorrows of our church with one another. Linda Jetalian Wyatt lights a candle of healing for her sister Carol. And she shares this poem in memory of her grandmother, Hailun Chibukchen Moradi, who died many years ago. Musical Transcendence. I started with vocal warm ups. Then I sang Heider Mare for a few bars. Who would sing it for my aunt when she greeted heaven? Perhaps her sister, if she could maintain composure. And then I thought of you, dear Nana. We were together again, yearning for you never ceased. I was that child you took to hear that aunt's sister sing. And you were so proud of her. She stood on a med stage, a big stage, an Armenian gem of the diaspora far but close in song to your homeland, American melodies swelling spherically, who had introduced me to soprano sonority. Now I listen to Bach's concerto in F minor, There is Love. A serendipitous bridge this morn to remember your sweet love, your hand holding mine, walking in and out of that concert hall the sun shining, Sunday afternoon, together. Jane Beckwith lights a candle to say that as we express our thanks and gratitude to the first responders, nurses, and doctors, let's also remember the ancillary staff working with COVID patients every single day. The housekeepers, dietary staff, maintenance, nurses' aides, lobotomists, respiratory therapists, and so many more. Patient care can't happen without them. Joan Russo offers a prayer for her friend Toby, who is in hospice, that her journey be peaceful and without struggle. And Rob Cole says a prayer in memory of his wife Suzanne's passing on May 26, 2019. Please continue your own thoughts and prayers in silence. We hold these prayers of memory and healing and peace in our hearts. We know there are those joys and sorrows which go unexpressed among us this morning. So we reach out to one another in compassion as we say together the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. First Unitarian Church relies on your financial support to maintain our diverse ministries and programs. This week, volunteers continued to reach out via phone and email to all First Unitarian Church members and friends. We trained several youth to be worship technical directors for our summer services. And the Social Justice Committee continued its work meeting online. If you would like to support all we do, text 844-906-2338, followed by the amount you wish to donate to First Unitarian Church. You can also go to firstunitarian.com and click Give Online at the top of any page. I invite your generous contributions for the good work of First Unitarian Church. Twenty-third Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Memorial Day connects us to our past. It reminds us that our human fellowship is not only with the living, but with the host of witnesses who have gone before. On this Memorial Day Sunday, we remember those who gave their lives in service to their ideals. And we remember all of our beloved dead, whose memories live on in our hearts. The origins of Memorial Day are lost to history. People have always mourned those who fell in battle and decorated graves of soldiers. 
There's one story of an early Decoration Day, as Memorial Day used to be called, in Charleston, South Carolina in 1865. As the Civil War was coming to a close, newly freed slaves in Charleston, South Carolina, chose to express their gratitude to Union soldiers who had perished in an open-air Confederate prison. These newly freed people cleaned up that gravesite, decorated it in honor of those who had given their lives for the cause of freedom. Those African-American memorialists might have remembered a, fall, a fallen soldier like Thomas Jefferson Spur. If you can remember in our dining room here at church, there's a large marble plaque on one wall which remembers the sons of the parish who died in the Civil War. And one of them was Thomas Jefferson Spur. He was born on February 2nd, 1838, here in Worcester. He uh, was a serious and careful student. He went to the neighboring university, which meant Harvard University. He suffered from a visual impairment. It caused him to leave college early but he returned and graduated in 1858, having employed somebody to read his texts for him. He went to Harvard Law School and worked in the law offices of George Frisby Hoare here in Worcester. And he was traveling when war broke out, still continuing his law studies. He was commissioned as a first lieutenant in the 15th Regiment of Massachusetts Volunteers in 1862, and he joined his regiment on the Potomac. Now his men were battle-hardened, and he was new. His commanding officer was away, so he became the commanding officer, a green commanding officer of these experienced troops. But his men loved him. They loved his kindness and bravery and willingness to suffer the hardships of war alongside them. This unit joined in the Battle of Antietam in Sharpsburg, Maryland. It was devastating to New England troops and the bloodiest day in U.S. history. Over 22,000 men died or wounded or went missing on that day. And Spur was one of those who was wounded. He was moved to a private home in Hagerstown. His family was able to join him there for a few days before he died. He had been joined in the army by Isaiah a free man of color who was the family's servant and who served as Spurs' aide-de-camp. Isaiah was with him during his convalescence and death. Although he had been mortally wounded, he refused to be carried to the rear. We remember Spur, his sacrifice, and his service on this Memorial Day. And on this Memorial Day, in these hard times, we remember service in many forms. Not only those who gave their lives in the military service, but today, those who have died of COVID. The New York Times has been memorializing people who died of COVID, people we might think of as ordinary people, but if you read their stories, you realize how much goodness is in every person and how many of these people gave themselves to their ideals during their lives. So today we remember people like Alfred Healy of Holyoke. He earned a Bronze Star in the Korean War, and after the war continued to serve his country as a postal carrier and then a postmaster. He died in the Holyoke Soldiers' Home. We remember Dr. Julie Butler of Harlem in New York City. She was a veterinarian. She operated one of the only veterinary clinics in Harlem. She was one of the few African-American graduates of her veterinary program, and she mentored other African-American veterinarians during her career. She believed that if you had the means to give, you should give. She died of COVID at home. We remember Idris Bey, a New York City firefighter. On September 11, 2001, he was an emergency medical technician who tended to the wounded at the Fallen Tower. He was a former Marine and a history buff. 
He died at Coney Island Hospital. We remember someone like Caius Kelly, the first working nurse in New York City to die of COVID. He was a nurse manager known for his empathy and compassion. Caius's sister said of him, let me be absolutely clear. Caius was not a victim. He served with love. If you needed care, you would get it. He ran toward the oncoming enemy determined to bring survivors back with him. That's who he was. Those who serve, whether on land or sea or in the air, whether at home or overseas, whether in the military or for peace, whether fighting war or fighting disease, our country is right to honor their service and their memory today. Sometimes that service is a sacrifice of freedom, of comfort, of health. Sometimes it is a sacrifice of life. Now we are all being asked to sacrifice something for the well-being of our whole society. We can't see the people we want to see. We can't go everywhere we want to go. Not everyone has work. Not all of our children are getting the educations that they need. We can't be with our loved ones in their illnesses or even in death. From the big to the small, from the personal to the societal, we are making sacrifices. These are hard times. So it is in these times that we call into our hearts the host of witnesses who have gone before. Their service inspires us to do what we must do for the good of the whole. We remember them with love, with honor, and with dedication. I invite you now to call to mind your beloved one, remembering their acts of kindness and service.
forth into the world in peace, be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good, render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor everyone. Love and serve the holy, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit forever. Amen.